Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So today we will be solving the problem. Implement Q using arrays. Now you know this uh, Q data structure is in the C++ STL as well as the Java collection. So what is this Q data structure? This is nothing but a first in, first out data structure. What does that mean? Now imagine this is your Q data structure, okay? And I say that I'm going to perform push operations. And these are the push operations. First I say, kindly push 4 into the queue. So you'll push 4 into the queue, okay? After that, if I say you, please push 2 into the queue. So 2 will go into the queue. After that, if I say, push 3 into the queue. So 3 will get into the queue. But right after that, if I say you, give me the topmost element of the queue. Ideally, should have been this, but... When I say first in, so the first in element was 4. So this guy becomes the topmost element. After that, they have one more operation which is known as the pop operation. Now what does this pop operation does? It deletes the first in, first in guy. So the first in guy gets deleted. After that, if you do a top operation, this time the first in guy is no more. So the next first in guy is 2. So the top operation this time returns 2. So the traversal is in the first in, first out direction. That is what a queue data structure is. Now again, in Java, you will also have similar functions like push, push, top, pop. Instead of top, I think it's peak. Again, in uh, pop, it deletes as well as returns. But in C++ STL, it only deletes. And if I say pop, it deletes. In Java, it also returns the deleted element. That's the difference, but we are going to implement this using something which is known as arrays and I hope everyone knows that. So imagine that these are the operations that I have to perform. So I'll be explaining you how to implement this using a array. So imagine, imagine the maximum size of this Q data structure can be somewhere around 5. That is the maximum number of elements that this Q data structure can hold. And the indexes will go like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And we will have a couple of pointers. One is the front pointer. While the other one is the rear pointer. Okay. So we will have a couple of pointers. Now I am saying that the maximum size is 5. So we will keep the count of elements in the queue initially to be 0. Now let's uh, perform the push operations. So the first operation says push of 3. Remember whenever it says push of 3. First step that you need to check is the count is zero. That means it is lesser than the capacity of the queue. That means you can definitely insert this three over here. So what you will do is wherever the rear is pointing, take this three, take this three and put it onto the rear index. And right after that, please make sure that this rear guy moves to the next. Okay, done. And also make sure the count is increased to one. After that, I'm saying push of 2. Again, check if count is that. So that means count is lesser than n, which means that we still have uh, we still have space in the queue. So just take this 2 and wherever the rear is pointing, just point it to that position. And once you have done that, take this rear, move it to the next element, right? And increase this count guy to 2. So this couple of operations have been done. Now I'm saying push of 1. Again check if the count is lesser than the capacity. Yes it is. So take this 1, insert it into your rear index and make sure that the rear is moving ahead to this guy. Okay, that is done. Right after that, increase the value of count to 3. So this operation is also done. After that I'm saying push of 8. Whenever I'm saying push of 8, again you'll check 3 less than 5. Yes, it is. So 8 will be placed wherever the rear is pointing. And this rear will go to the next index guy, right? This rear will go to the next index guy. And the count will become something as 4. So the push of 8 has been completed. Now you have a push of 6. Now since I have a push of 6, I again see if the count is lesser than this. Then what I'll do is, I'll take this 6 and I'll in, enter it over here and I'll take this rear and I'll move it to the imaginary 5th index. Remember this, I'll move it to the imaginary 
fifth index. Okay, so what you've done is, as of now, the count will be five, right? Because I've inserted five elements. So the push of six is also done. But the moment the push of seven comes, I see that the count is equivalent to the capacity of the queue. So what I'll say is, hey, the queue is full. So you cannot be inserted. I'll return a message that the queue is full and I cannot insert it. So that's that's what we will return. And let's imagine I've been asked, which is the top element? Now, you know, the queue is nothing but a first in, first out data structure. So which was the first inserted element? Three. So if I if someone asks you the topmost element, then wherever the front is pointing, yes, wherever the front is pointing, that will always be your top element. So there is an edge case. Please make sure the front guy and the rear guy should not point to the same index. As you saw in the uh, when we started, the front and rear was pointing to the first guy. Hence, I could say that the queue doesn't have any element. Only if they're not pointing to the same, then only return your front. So that's how you can get the topmost element. Right after that, I've been asked to pop. Yes, right after that, I've been asked to pop the element. So if I've been asked to pop the element, so what will I do? Pop means again in the first in, first out. Hence, this three has to go. Yes, this three has to go. So what you'll do is, you'll take this three off. You can put minus one, you can put anything as you wish. But the key point over here is make sure you move the front pointer. Yes, you move the front pointer over here. Right, you move the front pointer over here. And after that, you make sure the count has been reduced to four. So this is how the pop operation will be done. Now I have an operation which is top. So if someone again asks you the top, wherever the front is pointing, that's two. So the top comes up to be two. So the, the, this is how you can perform all these operations. But what if, what if I have one more operation lined up and that is something which is known as push off nine. If I ask you, you have to do a push off nine. Now the rear is pointing to an imaginary index five, which doesn't exist, but the count is lesser than the capacity. Hence this nine can be inserted. So what you will do is wherever the rear is pointing, right? So you'll do a rear modulo of whatever is this value n. Okay. So what will happen is this will give you zeroth index. This gives this empty index. You'll take this nine and you will point it over here. So this is how this will work. And right after that, again, you'll move rear to one step ahead and rear will move to the imaginary index of six. So rear moves to the imaginary index of six once the rear has been moved here please make sure that the count increases to five back right after this just imagine i ask you to do one more operation that is pop operation so what you'll do you will definitely remove this guy and you will move this front to this portion and the count will reduce to four because these are the four elements that you currently have Right after that, if I ask you to do a push of 10, again, wherever the rear is pointing, modulo n. So 6 modulo n is 1, correct? 6 modulo m this time is 1. So you will take this 10 and you will put it to the first index. And again, you will move rear to the imaginary 7th index, right? So if you do a modulo n, you actually are again tracing it back from this side. So that is how you will make sure that even if this is full, you will continue as a circular array. Yes, you'll continue this as a circular array and circular array can be easily done using modulo n concept. So that's how we can uh, definitely implement Q using arrays. Now, if someone does ask you, please print all the elements of a Q, then how will you print all the elements of a Q? Again, very simple. What you'll do is, you will simply iterate from front and you'll go on till rear minus one from front to rear minus one and you will print nothing but a of front modulo n you just need to do this because it's a circular array because whenever you print two it will get printed this one will be printed 
then the front uh, the eye moves here this guy will be printed then it moves here this guy will be printed then whenever this 5 comes 5 modulo 5 this guy will be printed whenever this 6 comes 6 modulo 5 this guy will be printed so this is how you can definitely print the q but we have to implement this push function as well as this pop function so let's implement that now so can i say if i'm implementing push of x the first thing that i need to check is if the count is equivalent to the uh, capacity or that is nothing but n if that is equivalent i can definitely return a minus one stating that it is full or you can probably print a message that the queue is full we cannot insert an element but what if if it is not full i know one thing i do this a of rear modulo n that is what i do a of rear modulo n equal to x and once i've done that i simply move rear plus plus so that is how your push function can operate now how do you pop an element so if you remember our front was pointing to uh, some element right and what we did was we removed it but when when we need to be very sure that the count if that is zero i can return stating that there are no elements in the queue but if there are elements in the queue what we will do is we will assign some dummy number to this front please be very careful that you have to do a modulo n why because it might happen now front is exceeding exceeded and then circular circular array right front might exceed so front of modulo n is some dummy number it can be minus one it can be any dummy number once you have done that you will simply move front to plus plus that's how you can implement the pop operation and in the push operation please make sure you implement a count plus plus because it's very important that you count the numbers and in pop please make sure that you decrease the numbers so that is what you will make sure that these things happen what about the top function how will you implement the top function again very simple the top was the front element so you just need to make sure if a count is equal to equal to zero which means uh, there are no uh, i can return minus one stating that there is no top element or else i can return something as a of front always make sure you do a modulo n because your array is rotating you're just not moving rear you're also moving front ahead so it might exceed it might exceed so please make sure that you always use this modulo term everywhere that you're assigning values everywhere yes everywhere where you're trying to access the array please assign modulo n so that is how i can implement q using arrays now, if someone does ask you the size of the array the size can be easily get using count and if someone asks if the q is empty or not you can again use the count variable to tell if the q is empty or not so this is how the q can be implemented using arrays i hope you have understood the entire explanation so just in case you did Please make sure you like this video and if you're new to our channel, do consider subscribing. Bye-bye, take care.